It's time for the score. The most in-depth coverage of high school basketball. The score. Sponsored by Carpetland USA, Menards, Midwest Bank, and Western Illinois University. Welcome to the first score of 2024. Happy belated New Year. I hope everyone enjoyed the new year. We enjoyed some much needed, I don't know about much deserved, but much needed, needed time for sure, off yes. on the holidays. We're recharged, excited to get going another great season of high school basketball. But before we get to a new 2024, we want to start by taking one look back at one of the biggest stories of 2023. Moly fans have been longing for a state championship banner at Warren Fieldhouse. Well, tonight it finally happened. We celebrate 2023 IHSA 4A state championship with the raising of the state championship banner. <laughs> Directing your attention to the southeast corner of the old brick house, we can count 28 boys basketball banners hanging from the field house rafters, displaying historic achievements in the state tournaments. The Moline Maroons defeated Bennett Academy 59 to 42 in the state championship game at the State Farm Center in Champaign. Tonight, we celebrate that victory with the ceremonial raising of our first state championship banner. What a night. Wharton, the Maroons became just the second local Western Big Six school to accomplish the feat, joining Rock Island in 2011. It's a moment and memory these Maroons will never forget. It, it meant a lot, and even the guys that didn't get to come back, I got to talk to them and text them today, so they certainly a big part of it last year and a big part of it tonight. It means a lot. I mean, it means a lot to know that, like, gave something to the people here that, that they really wanted it. You know, we brought it here for it. They helped us all the way through. They helped us every day. Every every time here we play, it was hard. Every team we play here is hard. They helped us get to where we were and how we accomplished it. Now, Bronco and Grant unable to make the game, but they did talk to Coach and were very excited about that banner they hang up. As for the game, Braden Freeman kicks things off with a three-pointer, and the Maroons are off and running. More from Freeman. This time, he'll share the rock, finding his good buddy Trey Taylor on the inside for the layup, and it's a 7-0 run. Geneseo breaks that run as Owen Parker, three from the corner, is good. 7-3 Maroons. Marcus McQueen, a little hesitation dribble here, gets down the lane. He'll lay that one up and in, 9-3, Moline in front, and then they go to the bench, and it's the freshman, Brady Welch, in honor of his brother Grant, says, I can hit a 3-2. Moline would cruise on championship banner night, 61-17 is the final. I don't think so. <laughs> Let's head to United Township, a good one, as it was jumping in the bank, open late between UT and Rock Island, Desmond Jackson. Uses the window right there. Soon after, Jackson again from downtown. Three more of his 13 points. It was a 10-point Rock Island lead. Time ticking down the corner. K.J. Lamont with 17. Works the clock over to Devante Cartwright for the buzzer beater. 19-6 rocks after one. Second quarter, Rocky still rolling. Larry Olivier with the sweet touch from distance. 10 points for him. Can the Panthers make a move? Caden Terrell. Going wall to wall for two of his 10 points. Later, it's UT, UT's Dominic Roden with the step back three. He scored 11 to lead the Panthers. The Rocks own this night. Jackson penetrates, finishes strong. Rock Island wins 61 38. They move to four and one in the Western Big Six, 13 and four overall. Jason, tell him you're getting married, all right? No, I know, I know, right? I, don't, I do not think he's going to back down. Yeah. No, no part, no part of me think, no part of me thinks he's gonna back down. Ian, Ian, Gino. Maximize each possession we have. Make them work. At the end of it, secure the ball. Let's go right now. Let's go. Let's play. That's Chad Thompson from Galesburg. Congratulations. He just got engaged the other day. Let's check out the highlights. Nico Battaglia for Sterling driving to the basket. He gets the bucket to drop in an early Golden Warriors lead. Jackson Wyatt for. Galesburg distributing as he will find Tyree Taylor open. Three from the top of the key is good. Cuts it to seven to three. More from the visitors. It's Wyatt this time deciding, I'm just going to do it myself. He gets to the rim off the glass and good. That cuts it to a two point game, seven five. Then it's Battaglia sharing the rock to Andre Claver. Three pointer is up and good. He just reached a thousand for his career. Sterling goes on to win 79 to 44. 
to Don Morris Gym we go. Altman hosting state ranked Quincy 14 1 on the season. Altman playing tough early on. Daniel Vandigidi for the bucket using the window nicely. Pioneers to stay close. And it's Jack went in the corner, knocking down the three. Quincy showing why they're one of the best teams in the entire state for a Brady long core with the long bomb. We'll show you a final Quincy cruises in this one. They're undefeated. West for basics to play 86 to 39. Hey, let's go to the MAC. A nice matchup at PV. The 4 2 Spartans hosting Central DeWitt, picking this one up second quarter. It's a two point game. Max Schmelzer, rebound. Nice little jelly, as they like to call it. 21 17. Then it's Central DeWitt. I think that's what they call it. If not, I just made it up. <laughs> Mitchell Mayer taking a strong to the rim for the Sabres. 23 19. More from Central DeWitt. Taking it hard to the rim. It's Landon Schroeder. He'll get that bucket to drop to cut it to a four point game. And then David Gore's line catches in the corner, fakes. He'll go baseline. He'll get one to go. 27 23 at that point. Pleasant Valley goes on to win 55 to 38. Fifth ranked North Scott looking to stay perfect at Clinton. Lancers waste no time. Good ball movement here. Kayvon Phillips at the top of the key buries the three. Lancers with an early lead. Next trip down. Lather, rinse. Repeat. Brendan Reed adds three more. Lancers open up on a 12 0 run, and they're not taking their foot off the gas in transition. It's QB1, Tyler Girardi, taking a crack at it from three. North Scott can't miss early. They're up 22 4 late in the first. Defense turns the offense. Reed gets the steal and finds Jamarian Reedus for the easy bucket. North Scott, no problem on the road. They cruise 88 44. Your final score. Battle of Davenport. Battle of Bryant Stocking, I say. I love North it. North hosting Central. North looking good. Justin Collins buries the three to give the Wildcats a lead. North. Junior DeAndre? G Junior DeAndre? Oh, yeah. DeAndre Smith. North Junior DeAndre. There you go. There you go. He gets the bucket to go. Sometimes it's hard to read handwriting. Central looking good. Carter Light off the inbounds. Passes, drives, and gets the layup going in the foul right there. And then it is more central as it's better defense as it gets blocked and stolen. Nice play right there. We'll show you a final score on this one. 58-55 North wins by three. Four and two down Fort West looking to stay hot. They're hosting Muscatine. We go to this game. K Dolfelt. This is Sam Church in the paint. He gets that bucket. Then it is Idris Thomas playing really good basketball this year. The state high jumper, little move, splits the defenders, finds Andre Amari right for the layup. More from Davenport West. It's Devontae Bradford driving in low and getting it off the window to go. More from Bradford this time. He'll say, I'll step outside and I can hit the three from the corner. Why not? Muskies and West. This one goes to the Falcons, 77-58. Hey, let's help, help back across the river and check in on Orient and Riverdale. This one close late. Orient down. They go to the free throw line and they get some big free throws right there to cut the lead to two. That was Maddox Arnold then a few trips later. It's Maddox Arnold again, the fadeaway that ties the game at 60. Rams come right back, closing minutes. It's Jake Willems with the huge three that gave Riverdale a 63-60 lead, 24 seconds left. Orion, one last chance to win it, but it was not to be on this night. Great ball game in the three rivers. It's Riverdale holding on, and they win a good one, 63-60, your final score. 11-2 Sherrard hosting Erie Prophetstown, picking this one up third quarter. Connor Keegan for Erie Prophetstown, gives to Evan Steimel for the three. 23-22, Erie Prophetstown. Then it's Jack Halstad to Noah Fender for Sherrard for that three to extend their lead. More from Sherrard, Ryan Carton to Halstead. This time on the fast break, he gets that bucket to drop. And then it would be Halstead to Carter Brown. Carter Brown can score touchdowns. He could score three pointers. From way downtown. From way downtown, Carter Brown. There you go. Yeah, I think we need to start saying that one. It would be Sherrard winning 55 to 26. Kiwani looking for their 10th win of the season, welcoming Bureau Valley to town. Blaze Lewis drives corner, passes to Blake Johnson. He gets the bucket inside. We're tied early on. Bureau Valley coming right back. Elijah Endress cuts to the lane and gets the little jumper to go. Baseline as well. 
Your Valley with a one point lead. Kiwani coming right back. Braden Clark drives from the wing, gets the layup to go. Andy gets fouled. That cut the lead to two at that point. Kiwani's Cottrell Reed drives and dishes to Junior Murray for that bucket. We'll show you a final score. It is Kiwani winning this one, 68-59. They're now in first place in the Three Rivers East. We fly over to Weathersfield, the geese and tornadoes going head to head. A-Town misses the three right here, but Asa Stengel is there for the putback. That made it four nothing, A-Town off the jump. Kiwani has a shot blocked, but Weathersfield recovers, passes out to Zeb. Rashid, who knocks down the bucket right there. That cut the lead to two. Weathersfields, Colin Horn. Colin, Ho Colin Horn back, gets the ball in the corner, sinks the three. A-Town back up by three. This one would go back and forth. Carter Redford drives from half court, puts the shot up, rebound by Drew Fouch. He scores it inside. A-Town led 10-5 at the end of the first quarter, but it's Weathersfield coming back to win this one, 47-42. Your final score. It's halftime here on the score. We've got plenty more to get to in our first score of the new year. That's right. Up next, the ladies take center stage, and Brian Stocking is back in 2024. He's waiting the wings. Better than ever. He's next on the score. I'm Joe Wieskamp, and when I'm back home, my favorite show to watch is the score. Welcome back to the score. The MACBO, some of the best girls basketball teams in the state this season. Two of those teams colliding tonight in DeWitt. That's right, 7-1 Central Witt taking on 7-1 Pleasant Valley. Pick this one up in the third. PV adding to a lead off the inbounds. Reagan Hagniago with the bucket inside. Pleasant Valley up by four. More from the defending state champions. Pagniano sends in the lob to Quinn Vice. She finishes Inside, Spartans extend that lead to seven. Later in the third, Sabres punch comeback. It's Claire. Lacante with the three. Central to Wit down four. More from the home team, same spot, same result. Ava Putman puts that one in right before the buzzer. Wit down by four. Spartans put this one away in the fourth. Hagniano rattles in the three. PV extends their lead to six. Good ball game. Pleasant Valley wins at 60 to 53 your final score. North, looking to stay perfect in the MAC. Everyone chasing them. They took on a Davenport Central. After the fight for the ball here in the first quarter, it is Journey Houston up ahead of everyone for the easy lay-in. Gave it the Wildcats a two-point lead. Later on, it's Houston to Divine Bird. She misses the first one. Patton, those stats, gets the rebound and the bucket. North up by four. Later on, it is Burridge to guess who? Houston, actually Houston to Burridge for that bucket. They hook up several times on the night. Davenport North cruises by 60. Four and four assumption going across town to play three and five Bettendorf. Bettendorf finally healthy again and they're in front, but assumption goes to Maddie Nige. Her three pointer is good to cut the game to 18, 13 Bulldogs in front. Then they start firing some threes. First, it's Olivia Weber and I'm pretty sure she's a better shooter than her dad because she makes that three pointer 21, 13. And then it's the Olivia McCorkle show. She's back from injury. She'll knock down this deep three-pointer to make it a 10-point lead. Next trip down, they find her again. She'll hit another deep three, same spot. 28-15. McCorkle is on fire tonight. Bettendorf cruises 52-35. North Scott making the trip to Clinton to play the River Queens. Third quarter, Lily Lenninger tries her chances baseline. Nothing there, so she dumps it off to Allison Muller for the easy bucket. Clock winding down in the third. Home team would find a spark. Olivia Schneeberger knocks down the triple. Clinton still down. Fourth quarter, Lady Lancers keep bringing the heat. Avery Seifert, no problem from three from long range. The Lady Lancers get a roadie, 59 to 39. Really good matchup between undefeated Cal Weeks and once beaten Northwind. First quarter, Emily Beckman looking for something. Finds Ava. KV for the jumper, home team with the lead. Next trip down, first try won't go, but Cali Hill gets the rebound and the put back. Warriors extend their lead to four. Cal Weed on fire in the first quarter. Beckman would find the net from three. That's seven nothing run for the home team, but Northland would outlast the Warriors in this one. They get red hot after that. They win at 74-46, your final score. 
And we welcome back for the first time in 2024 with this brand new sweater, a yep. Christmas sweater. Santa brought it. Nicely done. I'm that surprised you got something. It's time for Stockpile Stats Nights. But what Brian Stocking does is he gets all the scores we need, so he's going to take us through the Stockpile Scoreboard. Muscatine is unbeaten at home this year. They beat West. Central City tops Easton Valley 40 to 28. Me Mediapolis is unbeaten on the road. They, do they drop Van Buren County by 24. In a game of runs, Lawise Muscatine had the last one, 12-1. They beat Wapolo by two. Going over to the boys' side of things, Princeton beats Mendota 60-47. Lucas Simpson, another 40-point-plus game. He ties his own uh, school record. They, they edge no they, Newman edges Hall by a point. Also, at the shoebox, it's Monroe's being Morrison by four. Fulton's defense strong again. The Steamers get forced, and, and they also scored the final first 15 points of the game. Anawan is 14 one of their last 15. They beat West Central. Stark County pulls away from Knoxville by 13. Moving on, United is 13 one of their last 14. They beat Galva. Princeville's undefeated in the LTC. They drop Bridgewood. And Central City beats Easton Valley by seven. And Eliza Muscatine outlasts Wapolo by eight. Everyone's wondering where Camille Gear is. She's under the weather. She'll be back next She'll week. Back next we week. hope you'll be back next week as well. We'll see you on the score.